Hey, this is Match once again. Welcome back to another video. This is another paid request, this time from Jacob. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topic, reaction, re-review, commentary, whatever the case may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And this is for Past Lives, a 2023 film. And a film that didn't some pretty good positive reviews out there. I know Jacob was a big fan of it. This really might as well be called Cuck Lives because it's the makings of a cuck. Cuck holding the movie? I mean, it's a boring owl house. <laughs> well, I've said our house, but it might as well be the owl house because this film, in my opinion, is a boring piece of shit. With unmemorable dialogue, a ponderous, slow, boring pace. That blows in the fuck house. Fuck it. Not our house. Our house. Starts out with these nosy folks looking at two Asian people and this other guy, who's not Asian. As like, oh, I wonder who that person is. I wonder if uh, maybe they're married as their buddy. Oh, maybe it's, uh, it's his, his brother and... You some nosy motherfuckers. How about mind your own P's and Q's, mind your own fucking business, have a token and smile, shut the fuck up, and take a picture of last longer. Stop staring at them, stop being fucking nosy. Worry about your own business. <laughs> so then it's about these two people. Hai Sun and a woman that, as a little girl, will become Nora. Because they're both childhood friends. They're playing together in South Korea, and one day the mom and such want to move Nora, that will be her, just Toronto name, and her sister, and they all don't move there. So then they, the two don't really have much of a conversation other than, you don't really get Nora telling and talking to Hai Sun, saying, hey, we're moving, this and that. And then he doesn't really say anything, they kind of just walk together, he goes by, and then, so the director knows what to show, the director really wants you to know what the movie's about. It's literally a scene where the two kids part, as they're walking away from the camera, one is going up, she's going up here, and he is going over here. So literally, like, to literally show you the separate lives the separate ways, the separate where that she has been elevated and he's kind of still down the dumps. Because lo and behold, 12 years later, High Sun kind of seems like a, I guess he was in the military, but seems like not much going on, no girlfriend or anything, while Nora is trying to be a writer in New York. And saw that he tried to get in touch with her a while ago on Facebook. So she messages him back. And they start talking with each other. But at the same time the dialogue isn't really that memorable. It's kind of, have you seen this movie? Okay, and then the guy watches the movie. And I get that like in real life. maybe. That, but for what, how deep is trying to detail... There's really nothing of note to talk about in terms of their chats with each other. Other than he's talking about how, yeah, you, Nora, you want to do everything and you, you, you want to have everything. They're talking through Skype. One asks, would you ever come to New York? The other asks, would you ever come to Seoul? The, She contacted him. Yeah, he messaged her on Facebook, but then he went on, you know, trying to go on. She said, hey, let's talk. And then there's this kind of flirtatious back and forth. And then, out of the blue, she stops and goes, you know what? Hold the phone. I want us to stop talking for a while. <clears throat> and the guy's like, why? He literally says, it took me 12 years to find my friend. And she's like, well... I just need to concentrate on my writing. Or go on this writing retreat. I need to concentrate on my writing. We'll, we'll talk soon. 
soon as in I think it takes like another 10, 12 years before they chat each other again. I'm like, you fucking bitch. Fuck this bitch. Fuck the bitch. Fuck this character. She's a selfish... Not manipulative, but she's like a selfish human being. High Sun's like a sad sack. And then the reason I said cuck is that it gets to many years later. Like she goes on this retreat. She meets this guy named Arthur. They get married. And then it's many years later. And as they're married, High Sun decides as he come off sad and lonely. He had a girlfriend but it broke up. Goes to New York. Now, in most movies, this is when one of them, mainly probably High Sun, becomes a killer, or a thriller, or a stalker, or he tries to kill, or does kill Arthur, and he wants Nora to himself. Instead, when he goes to New York, they chat a bit, and then the fucking Arthur guy is just the most complete cuck I have ever seen in a movie in a long fucking time. And people say, oh, you're being harsh. No, let me ask you a question for anyone out there. You're married to this woman for years. Her childhood friend comes by. She openly admits when you ask, Well, first off, she's saying lines like, getting married is hard for idealistic people like you. So, like, putting the guy down. And then, actually, I think she said that the high son, I believe. So I'm like, wow, so you're treating him like shit. But then to her actual husband's like, the husband asks, are you attracted to him? Uh, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, he is good looking, and... Literally, when you... Your wife says, yeah, he's good looking. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think so, but he probably is good looking. And then, yeah, we're going to go out to eat. And then, like, the two start talking in their natural dialect. And at first, she starts interpreting what the guy's saying. But then she forgets that. And the two keep having this conversation long ago about how uh, past lives... This belief that I guess is in South Korea, uh, with different choices. Maybe in a past life we were together, but then different choices. This is how it separated us. Maybe one day we'll be meant for each other. Maybe in the next life, pretty much fucking saying, "Hey, this guy's my soulmate, and I think he's hot." And oh, I imagine if you never left me, like this dial is showcasing. And the fucking husband just sitting there at the bar with this kind of look on his face going. I'm like, dude, you fucking cut. Like, you fucking bitch. Like, maybe the girl in High Sun should fuck. Because you seem to me not doing any of the fucking in the relationship. Not the ton fucking, the ass fucking, the buff fucking, or the diddy waddle fucking. I don't know. Docking, socking. Pick you up a drop and onto your dick. I don't know. Apparently not doing any of that. Or to the point she's not satisfied enough. Because she's still, you know, it's not about sex. Okay, well, obviously, doesn't seem like the love is really there for... I never felt this girl was in love with her own fucking husband. It felt like she had the doe eyes for this guy, high son, because they're childhood friends. And then it really, like, two minutes later, it like she was ready to sit on his face. And just... Literally to a point where the two of them go out to a cab and you think like she's going to go with him. Oh yeah, maybe on our next life we'll be together and maybe on our next life we'll be soulmates and yeah, you know what, maybe you should go back to your husband. The guy had to go and apologize to the husband. Like, hi, son's the one who grows up and says, I'm sorry. Listen, I'm sorry, we should not have been talking and, and cut you out of the conversation. She doesn't really apologize. Instead, she sees High Sun go, goes over, cries, and hugs her husband. So imagine your husband, you're comforting your wife. She's crying because her soulmate, uh, sorry, we're not going to be together. And he's a guy who I think is handsome. He's a guy who's my childhood friend. He's a guy who I'm crying over 
because oh, I just well, I, well, I guess I can't be with. She's like Jada Pinkett, tipped in about Tupac Shakir while being married to Will Smith. That's what this woman is a South Korean Jada Pinkett. She's married to Will Smith, but she keeps thinking about Tupac because all oh, Tupac, if you were here, man, we would be together. While we call him Will Smith, Will Cook, for good reason. Will Simp. So this Arthur is fucking Will. So uh, who's Arthur going to slap? Is he going to slap, well, Chris Rock's taken. Is he going to slap maybe Martin Lawrence? Maybe he'll slap Will Smith. It'll be a full circle. Arthur will go slap Will Smith. <laughs> That'll be a full circle. So uh, there's not much in terms of visual aesthetic to talk about. Uh, a lot of it is kind of just people talked in and walked around and talked in. There's really not much else happening within the story. Again, there's nothing deep in terms of conversation that I could interpret, inter, interpret, inter, interpret, penetrate, facilitate any type of template to showcase to you. Just cut lives. The, the misadventures of a cuck, his wife who wants to blow this guy and not blow away, like blow him. Like if the guy, if Arthur wasn't there, she'd probably blow him in the fucking diner while those nosy people at the beginning watch. And oh, my soul man, again, ready to two seconds later, sit on my face, or I will sit on your face. He's attractive. We might have been desperate for each other. Uh, I'm going to talk to you in our natural dialect. I'm going to stop translating for him. And we're going to talk to each other. And he doesn't know what's going on. And he doesn't say anything. Doesn't say anything. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't get, hey, wait a minute. Upset. Which he would rightfully be. And then your wife is crying for the man she didn't get. Because she's the one who chose to stop talking. To cut you her writing. Even though you could talk once a week on Skype or... You can do that. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, he did go to New York. But it's not like, hey, you know what? Maybe we could have been, but I'm happy where I'm at. He's a really great guy. And I'm going to tell him how great my husband is. And I'm going to get him into a conversation. And it shows how, no, it's, it just shows like two people that couldn't get over their childhood crush. One has a cut husband, the other sees so like a very sad, lonely guy whose girlfriend left him. He spent all his money going to New York. All he got was a thank you, fuck you, bye. And <laughs> past lives. Maybe, maybe her past life was Jada Pinkett. And maybe this takes place in the future. And I don't know. So, uh, it's Jacob. You're not alone. A lot of people like this film. I just sat here and went, you know what? This this ain't for me. This isn't for me. Just uh, Arthur the cuckold. He's probably the guy I was more confused by. Nor seemed like a very selfish lady, unlikable. I did not like her character. I guess High Sun would be the most likable, but at the same time, it's like, just get off your ass and do something. But you just say that's the point of the film. That's the point of the film is that if he had gone off his ass and made the connection, maybe they could have been together. Or same with if she had chosen love over writing. They, <clears throat> that's the whole point of it. But I just, I don't think they have that dramatic heft or that charming spark of chemistry in terms of you know, the, the dialect and them really being sympathetic with each other. It just kind of was very flat of a buoy for me. Very bland, boring. And it is it was a very slow movie. So, with that said, if you like the film, teach your own different opinions. But thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.